Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to our YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to talk about pros and cons of living in St. George, Utah in 2023. We've shot this video before and it received tremendous feedback from our viewership. And we figured that the 2023 edition of this video may be um, a good idea because things change as this community grows. So if you're considering moving into the area, this video may be important. So stick around until the very end to see whether or not St. George is the right place for you. And we just wanted to mention that this is the only truly Southern Utah local YouTube channel. There are several content creators that create similar videos that are not local to St. George, that don't in fact actually sell real estate or live in St. George or Southern Utah. See, there's a typical well, fake news she, deal. You asked now, me when look, she was appointed. Look. I told you when she was appointed. You're a third by your rate reporter. Yeah, and I was about to say, you know, content creation is great. Just about anybody could create a piece of content and make it relevant. However, if, if you're seeking real estate advice or you need a local expert, local help, this may be the place to get it because there's no certainty with some of the other places. We don't want to speak badly about anybody else in this industry. However, I think it's important to know when you're receiving local advice, it would, it would be good for it to be actually local. Anyway, let's dive into this video and get into some of these talking points. So what are some of the pros? So let's cover all the pros that we're going to talk about and then we'll go ahead and dive right into them. So let's see. The first on our list is we're going to cover scenic beauty outdoor activities, mild winters, low crime rate, our growing economy, it's a great place to retire, and a strong sense of community. So back to scenic beauty. That's probably one of the number one reasons that people relocate to southern Utah is it's known for its absolutely gorgeous landscape, scenic beauty. We're surrounded by national parks. There is no shortage of beautiful beautiful scenery all around you red rock formations like you've never seen anywhere else on this planet they are like unreal looking we're just a short drive away from zion national park and our pleasant desert climate makes it so that you could actually enjoy these things for majority of the year over 255 sunny days a year typically is a guarantee like it almost never rains here and most of the year the weather here is pretty mild and with that being said you know What's beauty if you can't like actually go out and experience it and enjoy it? Yeah. Do you know that over 50% of all the land in the state of Utah is owned by the government? So it's Bureau of Land Management lands. I did not know that. So what that actually means to people is they can go out and recreate on that land. So that, that takes us into the outdoor activities. If, if, you're, if you're into any of the outdoor sports like hiking, biking, off-roading, there's really no no better place to do it. Which that seems like that's what brings a lot of people here is the scenic beauty, the out, the endless outdoor activities because our weather is so nice. And a lot of our clients that move here love mountain biking and road biking and the trail system here is amazing. It's it's anywhere and everywhere. So there's no if shortage. You, if you own a Jeep or side by side, chances are you have probably heard about Southern Utah. The same thing with dirt bikes and mountain bikes. And when people talk about a trail system, it's not like you have to go to a state park to enjoy it. Like if you look at the map of St. George, pretty much regardless of where you are, you're never more than like what I would say, like never more than five minutes away from some sort of trailhead. That's true. And let's talk a little bit about the weather. So we are known for having over 300 sunny days. We have very mild winters, which is another pro, obviously. We might get a dusting of snow in the winter, maybe a couple times a year, but it doesn't usually stick around. Well, you know, historically, St. George used to be like a, a really, really heavy second home place. Um, when I first moved here 10 years ago, I felt like the traffic patterns would change during the winter time because so many more people are coming here for the winter because they're escaping winter from wherever their their primary residence typically, is typically known as snowbirds snowbirds slash retirees mm -hmm. so that's part of the reason why it's more noticeable in traffic because these are the people that are just enjoying life they're not necessarily in a hurry to get anywhere they got all day to get there so it becomes noticeable but i've i've grown to like and appreciate that because you know, if you're here to enjoy things, if you're driving super fast to get places, 
you don't get a chance to take in the scenery and truly enjoy everything that Southern Utah has to offer. It is a little bit of a slower pace of life. I guess depends on where you're moving from, but it's a very family friendly community. So it's, it's a great place to, to raise a family and well, I would say the pace of life has changed a little bit. That's one thing it's, that's... It's picking up. All right, real quick, and then we'll get right back to the content. If you're considering moving to St. George, Utah, or anywhere in the state of Utah, you're looking to move to a clean, safe place that still supports traditional American way of life, a lifestyle that is safe and fulfilling, a way of living that doesn't keep you wondering about what crazy local legislation will they pass next, what will the next tax hike look like, and what other madness is about to happen then I'm going to invite you to click the link below or send us a text to learn about our Southern Utah relocation program that more than 300 of our clients from all over the world have now utilized to call Southern Utah their home. Here's the reality. Here's the truth. I'm going to shoot you straight. This relocation program and Southern Utah is not for everyone. This is for people who value high level of efficiency and their time. They value the lifestyle that Southern Utah provides and are ready to make the move in the next six to 12 months. And this is for people that value high level of local expertise and professionalism and are willing to put their trust in a team of local St. George professionals that can guide the way. To get the details, all you have to do is click the link beneath the video and you can schedule a quick call with Michonne and I and you can decide for yourself. So with that being said, let's jump back to the content. Right. It's picking up. The community is definitely growing. And there are a lot, like Michonne just mentioned, there are a lot of families that are moving here because it's a nicer, safer alternative to where they just came from. It is absolutely awful what is happening to our beautiful country. And so many large metro areas are just insane. They're unsafe. I originally moved here from Chicago. And there's no amount of money that you could pay me to move back. And I still think that Chicago is one of the most beautiful cities in the world. It's just that now that we have a baby or a family, period, I don't feel that I would ever feel safe living there. I don't know about ever, but probably not for a long time. Unfortunately, there's no, no solution in sight. So that takes us to uh, the discussion point of crime rate in St. George, Utah, and in Southern Utah in general. So... St. George consistently ranks as one of the safest cities in the U.S. with the lowest crime rates and continues to overall provide sense of security to residents. Well, you don't that's, that's another huge reason that people are moving here. And I'm trying to think if I've literally, I mean, I've grown up here and lived here my whole life. I'm trying to think if there's ever been a period of time that I've ever felt unsafe. Like times are changing and obviously with open borders, like it makes you second guess everything. But I mean, I used to go running at night all the time, no problem. So now I second guess, but you don't really hear of any crime that has to do with any of that. Well, and second guess is a, it's a strong word. You're in bed by nine usually. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but in general, the amount of crime rate that's becoming acceptable. So I recently talked to one of my friends from Chicago because I saw an article in the media about how there was a major riot downtown and the like, mayor's isn't that pretty common there. Yeah. And the mayor's response was, well, kids are going to be kids. Like it was, kids? it was totally okay. People yeah. were getting stabbed. People were getting jumped in any event. None of that is even remotely acceptable. And any of the trendy riots that take place, it seems like they just get, they, they happen almost like on command in major cities. Those of you that live there, I'm sure you understand what I'm referring to. None of that is welcomed, accepted, or is even remotely happening in southern Utah, and we hope that it stays that way. St. George PD and, and local officials are doing a pretty great job at keeping this place safe and clean. And you'll notice that if you come visit. it's You'll feel and see that it's very clean. There's no graffiti. There's no homeless. I mean, you might see occasional one or two but but that's i mean that's just about anywhere these days well and i guess the the contrast of that versus what's becoming acceptable in any other major city in the us is absolutely insane and we we feel terrible for those folks that find themselves at the end of the rope or find themselves in that homeless situation but you just don't see a whole lot of that here that's true 
Okay, well, let's jump into our next topic is our boosting growing economy. So local economy with the growth that's being brought here with so many people relocating, there are a lot more businesses that are opening here. And I saw an article the other day that Washington, Utah is considered like number one place or in the top three places in the U.S. to start a new business. Entrepreneurs do really well here. Entrepreneurs do incredibly well in this area. Just growth with population creates new problems that could be solved. And if you find a way to solve these problems, it is certainly a great way to jump into entrepreneurship or bring your business from somewhere else. We've had a lot of clients that are located here from other areas started businesses and their businesses took off because Mm -hmm. this area attracts a lot of great people with with means to generate the income. So they're, they're great potential clients and customers for whatever, whatever business it is that you maybe bring into the area. Probably I'm trying to think of all, all the different employment opportunities that do really well here is probably anything surrounded by healthcare, anything surrounding new construction, real estate, entrepreneurship. I mean, healthcare, tourism, new construction, yeah, tourism. All of those verticals do really well, and there's still plenty of room for growth and plenty of opportunity. Let's just jump into our next pro, which is St. George has been historically a great retirement destination. For as long as I can remember. And now, you know, we have have a lot of clients that are anywhere from 12 months to a couple of years from retiring, and... We like to gather this feedback from them because they they do their research and then we try to implement it into our research and bring it out to you guys in these videos. So a lot of people are on a fence between retiring here or in Florida. And Florida used to be a very prominent place, but it, it blew up. And unfortunately, the quality of life in Florida, I feel like has changed quite a bit. And there are some uncertainties with increasing crime rate, the hurricanes and the most recent one is cost of insurance. It's nearly impossible to insure a property in Florida, partly because of the hurricanes, partly... Uh, Has that ever happened where they're just dropping people like that? No, that's a new thing. Uh, that's a whole other topic. Okay, sorry. I could I could post a link in the description below this video for those of you that don't know what's going on with insurance in Florida. It is quite crazy, and it looks like there's literally a monopoly in insurance. So... A lot of folks are struggling with either finding an option to insure their property or simply can no longer afford to insure their properties. None of those things are something that you would have to worry about here. We're too far away from the ocean. There are plenty of options for insurance companies. And in fact, it is pretty inexpensive to insure your property right here in St. George. So that is becoming progressively an even better option than Florida. And I'm sure some people will disagree, but uh, hey, if you think differently, drop us a comment below. I would love to hear your opinion. Okay, let's dive into our next topic, which is our community. We have a very strong sense of community here in Southern Utah with very welcoming and friendly residents. I've, I've experienced that firsthand. I've lived throughout many different places throughout our country and I learned in the South that Southern hospitality is more of a myth. I've learned in the Midwest that, you know, there is a sense of community in different parts of the city. Like the city of Chicago has smaller cliques of people that live within certain neighborhoods that stick together. One of the other pros and probably like one of the biggest pros for me is a strong sense of community here in Southern Utah. It could mean multiple things to different people so like southern utah or utah in general faith here is predominantly mormon and that actually inspires a lot of things that just are not true on the internet and i think some of them are inspired by the folks that don't want too many people moving into this community because it was kind of a hidden gem but even those folks once you get to know them are actually super friendly and accepting and so many people are moving here because of common interests and like common things to do so there are all sorts of groups for people that go hiking like in fact some of our clients that moved here have started new groups and they they obtain new friends so quickly and that's that's one thing that's i think a lot of people have in common that live here they're either from here like born and raised here or came here 
they're good people. So good people build big, great communities. I couldn't agree more. So with that being said, let's dive into some of the cons. Can you just give us kind of an overview of all the cons that we're about to talk about? So we were trying to think of all the top cons for probably a couple hours. Well, like going over, trying to think of what would be the top cons. And what we came up with is the housing costs, the heat in the summer, that's pretty obvious, the limited job opportunities, and the growth in traffic. Let's be real. It took us a lot of effort to come up with these cons. Yeah. And some of that effort, I mean, the cat's out of the bag. We've tried Googling them. We've tried using chat uh, GPT because that's that's what all the cool kids are doing now. Yeah, we've asked on the biggest St. George community Facebook pages, and these we keep circling back to these same these same cons. Yeah, but minimal cons is a good problem to have, especially if you're considering this area. So, housing cost is a very real problem, unfortunately, right now, and I think that's from a national perspective that's been an issue and with real estate location is the number one rule as always so anywhere that people want to be the demand outpaces supply and even though the interest rates are a little bit higher and you're able to purchase something without having to necessarily go over asking the the baseline the base cost in southern utah is becoming a little bit higher than the national average same thing with rents uh, it can be pretty challenging to find an affordable place to rent. So that that con is there, but you know ultimately it is it is definitely worth it. It is worth it if you could find the means to make it happen and afford the housing here. You will not be disappointed with living here. I couldn't agree more. Okay, and then our next con is the heat in the summer. We probably realistically have at least two and a half pushing three months of this summer wasn't actually that bad there was probably two hot months yeah sometimes it depends sometimes it's two hot months sometimes it's three never more than three the end of may through like the end of july could be quite hot sometimes we'll see temperatures up to 110 do we ever see it up to 115 yeah, like 113 or 115, I think, was the highest that we saw For this like year. A, a day or two. And, and, and to those of you that are watching this, and you may live like you know somewhere in the southeast, anywhere where there's heat and humidity, those numbers are unthinkable. Because if you're in Atlanta, Georgia, anything over 80, anything over 65 in Atlanta feels like your, your shirt's starting to stick to you when you go outside. Here, even, even 100 degrees doesn't feel as horrible as Atlanta 80 just because minimal humidity. We're in the desert, high desert, so humidity is typically right around 12%. I will not sit here and tell you that 103 or 107 is pleasant. It's not. It's hot. But if you have to go outside, like I remember when I lived in North Carolina, if it was over 85 degrees, by the time I walk across the parking lot from my office to my car, I would already feel like I need to change my shirt. So you definitely don't deal with that here. I can't stand sweating. So I would absolutely hate that. I can't stand when my clothes are sticking to me. Yeah, I I'm freak out. not a fan. Like I'm not even a fan when it's anything over 90 here. So under 90, I am at my happiest. Like I'm happy with like 70 to 90. It's just perfect. And in reality, you know, it's a small price to pay. When you compare this climate to say Midwest where you have a six month winter or even... You know, we have clients and friends in Idaho that say that they have four seasons, but you also extend the mud season when snow begins to melt. And if you live someplace really beautiful, it takes a four wheel drive vehicle just to get in and out of your house. I would say that two, two and a half months of hot weather where you don't want to be outside or if you're outside, you're by the pool is really not not a terrible way to go. Yeah. I mean, there. I mean, is there anywhere perfect? Maybe. Is it the best place to live? Probably not. Not anymore, unfortunately. Not anymore. Southern California has the best climate, but that's a whole nother topic. That used to be top on our list, but yeah. it is for sure gone. All right. Uh, limited job opportunities. I know we just talked about our boosting economy and all the different, what's the word? Economic growth opportunities. All the different opportunities and job fields that do really well here, but uh, there are limited jobs. I mean, I guess depending what field you're looking in, we don't have a lot of huge, like, 
So our economy is predominantly driven by tourism, real estate, and construction. Outside of those verticals, and healthcare. and healthcare, outside of those verticals, it can be a little bit challenging. If you are an entrepreneur, there is a decent amount of clientele that has capital to spend. But if you're talking like traditional jobs, you know, any like technology field or any of the normal jobs that could afford a decent living in a bigger city, you would be hard pressed to find those here. There's no manufacturing here. So you really have to get creative or bring a unique set of skills. Otherwise, it's hard for somebody to just start out and you have to get creative. I'm trying to think like, what are the people of Southern Utah? What do they love? Like they love to eat out. Like you try to go eat out on the weekend or anytime. It's crazy. Everything. It's it's crazy packed all the time. So I'm like, if you had a very authentic, unique, like restaurant, I feel like that would do awesome here. Yeah. You you won't do bad with food here. And And, it was, and for some reason there's like a car wash and a soda shop and a cookie shop on every (laughs) corner. It's insane. I don't know if this is happening where you live, but it's literally every corner. And every time there's like new construction going on, we're like, Oh, what's going to go there? It's, a car wash, a cookie shop, or a soda shop. Like, it's getting out of control, but apparently they must stay in business and do well if they just keep popping up left and right. So, I think I, that goes back to entrepreneurship doing well here. And a lot of people are really smart with their money. And they figured out that the profit margins on the soda shop, the cookie shops, and the car washes is so high. And then they've just multiplied it and repeated over and over to a point of becoming redundant. And what always puzzles me is like, how many car washes can you have in one town? And like, they all still do well. They all have lines all the time. So that actually kind of brings us back to our next topic. Like while we're talking about food is growth and traffic. So in the last 10 years that I have been here, I feel like this community nearly doubled in population. Total population of Washington County is getting close to about a quarter million people. And that's a highly populous part of Southern Utah. We're like in the in this corner between Nevada and Arizona and it's projected to grow some more. Now, with great growth comes the great stress on the infrastructure. The city of St. George was at one point, just a little stop, little oasis on the map. On my your, my on grandparents your have actually lived here since there's been the very first stoplight that got put in town. So it was just this tiny little town. And now it is, that would be pretty crazy to live here since then and just experience right. this kind and of growth. And just seeing the change. Yeah. Well, and the, the city of St. George is doing, the city of St. George administration staff is doing a good job on trying to manage the infrastructure and changing some of the zoning and city code but we're still a little bit late to the punch because the migration of people is happening much faster than the infrastructure can catch up. Like one of the complaints that I hear from our clients is that you get into like residential communities in St. George, Washington, and you literally have to drive. And by the way, you never have to drive too far. Like it's a 10 minute drive, but you become so spoiled here that you don't really deal with any real city traffic. Like I remember living in Chicago and driving three miles could equal to 45 minutes in the car because it's bumper to bumper. You will never see that here. I hope you'll never see that here. Certainly not right now. But my, a lot of the- My road rage would be insane. <laughs> I don't think I could handle it. But a lot of the communities are just built around being residential and it has more to do with uh, city zoning and planning where the master plan only allows to have residential. So like there's not even a 7-Eleven or a convenience shop or a gas station you just have miles of residential development and then you have your major roads that take you to all of the shopping and restaurants which is kind of weird like so you've got all the residential kind of on the outside and everything brings you into the middle right which it's it's getting too packed it can't handle it they need to start putting some of that on the outer skirts which they've been doing with and, like and that's, grocery stores and gas stations and soda shops and car shop car that's washes. what happens as the city matures because if you look at any large city like the city of chicago la new york at one point or another it was this size that's true it was smaller and then as things grow out new city centers become a, a prominent thing where like you have a downtown but you also have each neighborhood is known for its own unique things like you know, Chinatown gets put in, Little Italy gets put in, and these neighborhoods begin to grow. More culture gets brought into the area. So 
Growth and traffic is definitely a growing pain that we're going to have to go through. Unfortunately, it's not going away anytime soon, but I think that there is, there is a silver lining. With growth comes more diversity and more infrastructure, and hopefully the beauty of this city just continues to grow into something bigger. Although I know a lot of locals that are watching this are probably going to disagree because they don't necessarily want the growth. But can you think of anywhere else you'd rather be? Absolutely not. That's true. Well, it looks like that about wraps up our pros and cons on here. So if you found this video helpful, we would absolutely love to hear from you. Even if you're years out, months out, if, if you find our channel informative and helpful at all, we really truly would absolutely love to hear from you. Yeah, let us know if we could be of service to you. Michonne and I are available to answer any of your questions. If you enjoyed this video, drop us a comment below. If you could think of another pros or cons, if you already live here, drop them in the comments because we we like to create these types of videos because they inspire dialogue, they inspire conversation. So if you've got anything on your mind, we would love to hear from you. Of course, if you haven't subscribed already, smash that subscribe button. And if you found the video useful, give it a thumbs up. We will see you in the next one.